All right, guys, welcome back to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast. We are on location here in the USA. This is episode 213. I'm joined by a very special guest, Bryson DeChambeau. Bryson, second time on the podcast. Yeah. First time in real life, though. Mm -hmm. It's first time. I'm excited to be on. Thank you for having me. There's a lot of fun stuff to talk about, I think. There is. From what I I can disclose. There is a lot (laughs) of fun stuff to talk about, and we are going to disclose as much as we can possibly get out of here. Um, You know what? What's been... We've just quick one we've had a really fun week this week so far we've been making loads of content together content for my channel and then also for bryson's channel if you are new and you've not checked out bryson's youtube channel you are killing it on there at the moment you're fast approaching half a million subscribers i'm getting there surprisingly youtube is definitely the hardest platform to grow on and other than instagram right now just because of you know the live stuff and all that um it's quite interesting how it's all gone down but the youtube stuff has been great i've been very pleased and Again, I'll go. I'll go back to what I said a couple of days ago when we, when we started out when we first uh, saw each other and started playing. I'm here just to try and inspire as many kids as possible to play this great game. Uh, develops great character, personality, and uh, honestly has has a lot of good um, things that c- they can come about from it down the road in your future with business and and everything that comes comes around with that. It's it's awesome for character development, uh, and I just can't think high enough about it. And I hope to inspire kids the way I was inspired uh, as a kid, just playing. Uh, routine regular golf as an 11 year old seeing Nick Watney and Jason Gore and uh, Arnold Palmer Nancy Lopez numerous other golfers at golf course I played at was hosting a charity event and and they all came up to me and said Bryson we'll see out there one day on tour and it was just so inspiring I want to do that same thing but through the YouTube platform and how old were you then I was 11 and I went up and did a clinic in front of them as a part of a clinic and hit three drives and striped it and these guys were like oh would love to, to see you out there one day and sure enough I played with Jason Gore the guy that, that gave me that inspiration uh and, and then I went and won the memorial tournament the, the week we played in 2018 what so it's a hell? wild 360 and it sends all full turnaround uh where life just sometimes there's things in life that you just can't peg to coincidence do you think young Bryson DeChambeau growing up would have been all over golf YouTube. Do you think you'd have been watching it? So obviously you're a, you're a disciple of the game. You've yeah. really studied every corner. Um, yeah. you, your knowledge of the golf swing is second to none. Do you feel like you would have been really involved in kind of YouTube golf, or do you think you'd have been more down the technical aspects of YouTube golf? If I was growing up now? Yeah. <sighs> or would you like the entertainment? I think I'd be in the same path that I am on now. I'd want to play professionally. I'm a competitive guy, but I also love entertaining. That's one of the things I love to do. And that's why you see me being so drastic one way or the other, because I care. And I like showing that side of me because of the passion that I have for the game. Um, and I hope people see through that. It's not just me trying to play somebody. I'm not. It's, it's me being who I am and trying to deliver the fans the greatest entertainment experience I can provide them. You are, you, again, we've spent these last three or four days together. You're quite, kind of a natural at YouTube. You seem very uh, comfortable on camera. I'm getting better. It's taken a, t- a long time. I mean, I've been in this for about a year and a half. And again, I'm not the best at intros and whatnot, but I, I love trying to deliver interesting, chaotic, fun, crazy moments on YouTube. But obviously, I mean, I've been super, super lucky enough to film with, with a number of tour pros now, and they've always been great. Spending time with them is always a real pleasure. But certainly, you know, for you this week, I never had a fear that you weren't just going to, you you get it. You understand it. If I said, Bryson, we're going to do this crazy idea, you'd have gone, yeah, okay. I mean, we've had a few crazy ideas we filmed this week, but like, because you understand the value of it, you understand the entertainment side of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm guessing for you as well, to some degree, obviously you're enjoying the but it, it's good for your brand and your image it's a platform that you can actually share the real Bryson on exactly and I think that's a tough thing to talk about in depth because people don't fully understand who I truly am yet like I think pe- some people are getting there there's a lot of people that obviously don't like me and I understand and respect that opinion I'm okay with that uh, I have done some stupid things on the course and I will always admit to that nobody's perfect I'm human But I can say that if people truly sat down with me and went over things that I truly care about and want to do for the game of golf, they may have a different opinion uh, about me. And I think that's what YouTube allows me to do is control a little bit of that and say, hey, this is this this is what I'm trying to accomplish. This isn't just for me. I mean, the money is, is not it's not about the money. Like 
obviously live there's <laughs> a big reason why I went was because because of the money it was obviously because of team championship stuff and numerous other things but money was great YouTube that's that's not what I'm trying to accomplish I'm trying to inspire a younger generation and, and provide uh, hope to, to others that uh, don't know my backstory where you know I, I went around and uh, asked for money to go play summer events in golf because uh, my parents didn't have the money to do that um, you know those types of things I hope that people can start to see and understand and go wow man that's that's awesome um, hopefully I can do the same thing he did you know I, I, th- I think what again I'm just thinking out loud here I think what would be really good for your for your channel is to be able to open up on those kind of stories because again, I think sometimes as a professional golfer, a professional athlete, it's quite hard to really portray the, the real person yeah. because most yeah. people will see you on TV, on the internet, and they'll have a preconception, correctly or wrongly, where, where, where on YouTube, you could have that real nice dialogue with your audience and you mm-hmm. can almost share that vulnerability and that almost that honest truth behind it. What would be cool is to do like a live stream almost It'd be so of good. It, right? You have the chat box on the side and be able to communicate to anyone that wanted to ask a question about my childhood growing up and things like that. I think we're, we're looking into that, those sorts of outlets and how to engage properly and make it make sense. Um, Cause would you say you're fairly open? Oh yeah, I could tell you everything. I mean, I'm I, an, I feel I'm an like, open book. I feel like you're fairly open. Yeah, the only thing I can talk about is like some of the live stuff happening right now. But other than that, like we're good, living PGA Tour stuff. <laughs> um, I, I'm guessing there's things that everyone's going to find out about fairly soon with yeah, I'm sure. news breaking, etc. Yeah. Going on to ex- inspiring young golfers. Yeah. This year you did something very incredible. One of the only golfers in the world to ever achieve said feat. And not only did you achieve it, you achieved it in the final round to win the tournament by six. You shot 58 this Mm -hmm. year. You, Mm -hmm. it took you 58 golf shots (laughs) to play 18 holes of golf. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's definitely one of the highlights of my career. Besides winning the US Open, I think that definitely has to top. And how many under par was that? That was 12 under par, so it was a par 70. But again, it was oh, real. It was crazy. everything. You know, you, obviously we we've we played the past couple of days, and um, if you haven't checked out when we uh, tried to break 60, you should go check out the, that video uh, that we produced. Soon, out here. Yeah, I think this podcast will come out before that. But okay, that's fine. Yeah, they'll go check it out. And but again, it's not easy to break 60. What I've been impressed with you on the golf course these these last few days is. And again, we're not going to give any spoils away for the content that we've made, yeah. but you're obviously known for your driving. Mm-hmm. A number of years ago, you went on this crazy passion journey around distance and yep. getting stronger and getting bigger. And, and I still faster. am, by the way. It's not like I'm going to stop. It's We're at a, we're at a stall, stall point right now because of certain things. And you are also competing in long drive where yep. you ended up coming that was second so much fun, in the by world the championship against Martin Borgmeier. Amazing. So much fun. But out here today on a, on a normal, on a golf course where there's trees and there's trouble and there's yeah. hazards, I've been most impressed your distance, obviously, but how bloody straight you hit it for that distance. Like it's, it's quite mind blowing. It set such incredible club head speed and ball speed that you can actually still keep the golf ball on the planet. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I want to come to back to your 58 a little bit more in a minute. Sure. I've got. Uh... I can go down numerous paths on this, but there's been equipment changes that have helped me tremendously in this pursuit of hitting it straighter and farther. Because you're a free agent now, aren't you? Yeah, and I can use anything I want. And I'm fortunate, I was fortunate enough to get in contact with a company that builds drivers for guys with faster speed. And that has tremendously cha- transformed my game. I put it in, put the crank driver in a week before, um, a week before Greenbrier, and then I went and shot 58 with it. And then went and won uh, the next, well, not the next, that the next event, which was Bedminster. It was the event in Chicago. It was a live event in Chicago. So two out of three tournaments, I had won, and then we won the team championship. And I shot five under, four under the last day, something like that at Doral. So you could say that my game completely transformed. Where I was back in the pack, I was like 28th, 29th on the points list um, midway through the year this year on live. And then when it finished fourth, unfortunately, Brooks <laughs> won the last event and kicked me out of that third spot. But, you know, it's it's one of those things that if I had that driver earlier in the year, I think there was no chance for anybody else. For you, obviously, with live seasons now, it has an off season. 
Yeah. This is now the off season. Mm -hmm. Were you actually somewhat gutted that the season was coming to an end? Because, bit, you, because your game was trending so well. Yeah, a, a bit, definitely. But it was nice for me to recover, relax, get my equipment right. We're doing some amazing stuff in that forefront. I can't wait to show the world what's what's going to come about next year. Going back to your 58. Yeah. Okay, so you're obviously playing well. You're trending. You were leading the tournament anyway. Were you into the final round? No, uh-uh. Matthew Wolf and David Pooj was ahead of me by a little bit. And then I just caught up to them and I surpassed them. Just you know you needed to go out and shoot a good number Yeah, I knew like 63, 62 was gonna, gonna get it done. Um, I didn't know 58 was gonna happen, but it's funny. I can take you through the round if you want well, to. Well, yeah, get, I, I think the kind of, for the I'm audience. sure you could take us shot by shot, but this kind yeah. of like, what, what were the key moments in that round that you knew something pretty special was taking place? The key moments, well, every one of them was important. <laughs> every 58, uh, every all shot. 58 shots. Yeah, all 58 shots. They had to be, right? Even I, I made bogey on eight, and I still shot 58. Number one, I'll go through it real quickly. It's not, it won't take long. And I remember this like the back of my hand. Down the middle, hit it to the back left flag, to six feet, almost hit it too far. My wedges were super dialed in that week. Made a six-footer. Two, striped the drive. Striped a wedge from like 145, almost went in the hole, went to about seven feet short, knocked that putt in. Three, hit an eight iron, back left flag, went 15 feet long, missed a 15 footer for birdie. Four, striped the drive, striped a wedge in there to three feet, made it. Just on that one, so you're four holes in. Four holes in, three, under, three under through four. But I'm guessing for you, you've done that loads of times. All the before. time, yeah. Like mm -hmm. that's not, is it, that's it's not nothing. It's crazy nothing. just yet, okay? Nope. Nope. So when, when did it become a point? So five. I'll let you know. Carry on five. I'll gone. let you know. <laughs> it's, it ebbs and flows, by the way. It's not like it's one of those things where it's like, oh, this is the moment, right? Uh, five, hit a nice iron down there, flew my pitching wedge too long, made a bad decision, flew it long into the back bunker. I hit the bunker shot, hold it out uh, from the back bunker. It was a really sick bunker shot. Uh, that got me to four under through five. Pipe to drive down the left-hand side on six, hit it up there to 17 feet. Knocked that 17 footer in. No, 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 it was actually 12 feet. 12 footer, knocked a 12 footer in. Five under through six. Pumped the drive on seven. Got down there right next to the green, chipped it up to six feet, made a right to left curler, broke seven inches. Uh, <laughs> went in the hole. Number, you remember this? <laughs> yep. Number eight. It's the best round of my life. <laughs> How many times have you rewatched it? Uh, a dozen, probably. Yeah. Yeah, just the shots I've hit. We've done a compilation, just done that. And then, uh, and sorry, I'm going in my head it's right now. So eight. Eight. Hit a six iron, pushed it way too far right because didn't have, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, I pushed it way too far right, hit it to 10 feet short, missed the putt, super mad. I hit a great putt, just didn't go in. Nine, hit a hybrid down the left-hand side, hit it up there right of the hole, about 17 feet, knocked that one in. That was clutch. Making a bogey on eight, going back to, what was it, six under, or, yeah, five under through eight, and then going six under through nine, right? It was pretty big. 10, drove it up next to the green, chipped it up to 10 feet, made it. So now I'm seven under through 10. 11, I pulled my driver into the left rough, had this crazy under the tree shot to the back left flag, perfect shot, had a 12 footer. I lipped it on the edge, barely missed that putt. So again, I'm seven under through 11. 12, par five, dog leg right, hit it left into the left rough, hit a six iron up there, two putt, it hit it about three feet, made it. So eight under through 12. 13, hit a nice hybrid down the middle of the fairway, hit a nine iron, completely blocked my nine iron. I was, I just didn't execute the right shot, blocked it to the right edge of the green, a 60 footer. And I hit it up there to like three inches. I almost made it actually, it was crazy. So part of that hole. And at this point you're leading the tournament now. Yeah, I'm leading the tournament by like one or two, I think at this point. So then I'm, uh, what is it? Seven under through, or eight under. Eight under through uh, 13. 14, hit a five wood down the right-hand side. Really good drive, just didn't, just caught the rough. Caught a little bit of a flyer out of the rough. Went to about 20 feet long. Left a short right in the heart. And uh, so eight under through 14. And at this point, I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I'm, I'm leading the tournament. I got to finish this off. Matthew Wolf blocks his uh, shot right of the hole, right of the green. And I think I was one up or two up at this point. Two up at this point. Two shots ahead. And no, 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 one shot ahead, actually. One shot ahead because, yeah, yeah, Because yeah. he hits his right, chips it up, misses the putt. I hit my shot on 15, 
right up next to the hole, like six, seven feet. And he missed his seven footer. He missed his seven footer. And I made uh, my six footer or whatever. So then it went to a three shot lead. Yeah, with three to play. And uh, at that point, I made birdie. I'm nine under through, what is it, 15? I'm not really thinking of shooting 58 at this point. I'm still trying to win the tournament. Yeah. So I went from like seventh hole, oh man, I'm gonna, I could shoot 58, you know, I could shoot, or 59, right? I have a chance to shoot in the 50s to then, oh, I made bogey on eight and whatever. I'm just gonna try to win the golf tournament. And then it gets to 16 and I'm nine under through 15. I stripe this drive on 16 right down the middle have 30 yards to the front right flag. At this point, the rain starts dumping like crazy. And I'm thinking to myself, just just get it in the house. You know, you got a three shot lead with three to play. These are some pretty easy holes. As long as nothing crazy happens, I, I got this. And uh, I hit it up there, hit a nice little shot to about nine feet. And it's dumping so hard that I'm not even thinking about my score. I'm just thinking about executing the next shot, which was actually a tremendous benefit to me. I made that putt nine footer. I walked in like it was nothing. I didn't even think anything of it. Got the 10 under. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. 17's a par five, 18's a par three. So I'm 10 under, I have like a three or four shot lead now over Sebastian Munoz, I believe. Going into 17, I'm 10 under par. And I do not want to miss it right. There's OB right and water right. I'm like, just miss it left in the rough. You can hit it up there. And it's dumping pretty good at this point. So I pipe a drive down the left-hand side, just short of the bunker hit a five would kind of flare it to the right uh it's short of the bunker on the right hand side of the green and the pins back middle and i hit my chip shot up there <laughs> doesn't get all the way up there i'm 10 feet short and i'm like darn uh, but funny enough i'd actually hit that putt in the practice round numerous times for some reason i just there was a hole up there and i just hit it literally from the same exact angle i knew what it did it was a straight putt it looked like it broke left but it was just dead straight i hit the right center went in the right center and it's funny because it was dumping still at this point. I, I just made it. And when it went in, I went, oh, 11 under, oh, 59. Because it was a par three finish one set. Yeah. And I went, oh my gosh, I'm 11 under. I could shoot 59. And that's when it sunk in. I was like, oh my gosh. And, and I'm guessing at that point as well, news started to break. Yeah. Everybody was starting to freak out. You, you everybody start in the group was, they knew where I was. And Greg Norman was walking along the side and uh, you have just everybody around. Uh, watching a teammate was up on the side of the green teammates were and you know Charles Howe Paul and uh, Bon were all up there and it, I just know the situation but I kept going in the back of my head stay in your bubble stay yeah. in your bubble nothing's here it doesn't even matter you're just executing another shot like you're on the range but everything was super wet on the ground so I was nervous to kind of maybe chunk it how long is the last hole it's like 175 yards something like that to the back middle right flag and there's a huge slope in the middle of the front of the green and you kind of got to get it up and over that slope yeah. and there's a small little section back there it's like 15 feet or 20 feet wide it's not that big and i bounced and landed up and spin it back i, I thinned it just a little bit because i was scared of chunking i thinned it in this little nine iron and it bounced up and then spun all the way back down at a 40 footer yeah. and at this point my caddy looks over to greg and goes and goes what's he at and greg's like 11 under par greg's like or, and, and jibo's like did your caddy not realize? He didn't realize. I did. My caddy didn't realize I was 11 under par. He thought I was 10 under par. Oh, my God. And he was like, oh, he needs to make this for 59. And Greg's like, no, he needs to make par for 59. And Greg's like, what the heck? And at that point, you had a 40-footer. I had a 40-footer. It was, it was really the raining. Slope, dumping, and it falls off down to the right. And at this point, I'm just thinking, okay, it's, you know, th I think it was like 33 feet or whatever, but I effectively played it 40 feet. And in my head, all I said to myself was, you do this every single day when you warm up. You know how to hit a 40-footer, just hit a 40-footer. Stay in your bubble, hit a 40-footer, start at three feet out. And you can hear the communication I have uh, with Jibo. And he's going through the numbers with me and I just say, all right, 40-footer. He goes, yep, 40-footer, let's go. And then right then and there I go, this is a 40-footer, you've done this your whole entire life. It's three feet out, let's go, knock it in. Knock it up there close. And yeah, was I concerned to three putt? Absolutely. I was crapping myself. I'm like, I, <laughs> I got a 40 footer in the rain. I know. Don't know how the ball is now moving because it changes how fast the ball is moving on the green with the rain coming in. I think just get it up there by the hole, right? You've got, every, you've got everybody watching. watching on the AT. Yeah, and I'm going to win the tournament, but still everybody's watching. Like, is he going to shoot 59? Is this going to happen? First time in live golf history. And I get up over the putt and it's like, 
Have you seen um, the greatest game ever played with yeah. Shia LaBeouf? Yeah, yeah. Where everything just goes Go quiet silence. and yeah. silent. It's exactly what happened. I didn't even know rain was happening. I had nothing. I didn't have a clue that anything was going on other than take it back to the right heel and execute through. And I did that and I look up and I'm like, holy shit, that's on a good line. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's curving in like five feet. I'm like, this is for 58. This is for 50, 58. And I kept saying it in my head, this is for 58. And I just go nuts when it goes in. Perfect oh speed. Oh my God. Perfect direction. And I shot 58. It's crazy. Yeah. It was 58 wild. with a bogey. Yeah. You felt like you could have potentially done slightly better. You sounds like you left a couple out there. You, you, yeah. you hold a bunk shot, granted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously the foot, forty footer on the last, but it wasn't right. as if uh, anything crazy. No, crazy it wasn't like happened. holding out from everywhere. Like, and did doing you, have crazy an, stuff. you didn't have an eagle? Did didn't you? Didn't have an eagle? No, it was thirteen birdies and a bogey. Wow, it was nuts. It was just a different mind frame that I was in. I had everything going my way, and the equipment was right, and. I had a lot of, just everything fell in my direction that way. I remember the first ever live tournament, there was a mention that if you, the first player to shoot a 54 would win $54 million. <laughs> Funny story. His Excellency called me after and congratulated me, obviously. He goes, hey, Bryson, you know, if you would have shot 54, you would have won 54 million. And I go, but you probably, <laughs> you didn't have, you didn't have four shots better out there, um, did you? Okay. So. <laughs> You take the bogey away. So let's listen, listen real quick. So you, you take just real, maybe, again, I would never, ever want any shot back. I shot 58 and I shot 58. That's, I don't have to do it again. I did it. I don't want to do yeah. it again. But if there was an opportunity, that was it to shoot 54. It was on the right golf course, the right moment, the right course conditions, the wind, everything. And the way I was playing, the way I felt. So number eight. How many right? more mulligans would you have needed? How many mulligans would you oh, have needed? Oh, it would have been four. Four mulligans. Yeah, yeah. Like. But as in like, um, what, you know, like the bogey, for example. The bogey. Was that not just a bad iron shot into the green? It was green? a bad iron shot. It's so just, so that's, just that's a bad only swing. one mulligan. Yeah. yeah. So, so it might have only been three mulligans. Maybe it could have been three mulligans. But, but I'll say that if I make par and eight, let's say I make um, 11, I make the 12 footer that barely lipped out, right? Yeah. And then you go and say on three, the par three, I had a 15 footer that I barely missed. That's three. And then you do some random crazy one on 14 where I left it short right in the heart from 20 feet. That's 54. Crazy. That's 54. Two years now, you've been playing live golf yeah. for mm -hmm. as the captain of Crushers. Yep. Truthfully and honestly right now, name me the three things that you are happiest about with live golf and three things that could be improved or, or is not as good as you think it could be. Do you can think you give, me, can you give me a bit of time just of to think, and think yeah. through that. I mean, have you got your three? Have you almost got your three kind three, of three good ones? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the three good ones I, I absolutely have. It's it's the team golf aspect. I absolutely love to see the team golf aspect. It is amazing the chemistry we have, the family feeling uh, that we all get. I never would have thought I'd have been good friends with those three three guys: Paul Casey, Honor Bond, Lahiri, and Charles Howell the third. And their families are fantastic. Love them to death. Um, that's one amazing part because I played college golf and I love college golf. Yeah. Love the team atmosphere. It seemed like obviously when you were playing Ryder Cup, you seemed to love Ryder Cup as oh, well. That's my favorite thing. I would have loved to have played this year. Yeah, it would have been a complete honor to play, and it didn't work out that way. But hopefully, I get to play next time. Yeah, um, if things get figured out. Um, another th another aspect that's really cool is i would honestly say the time that we have off to prepare our bodies to play at the optimal level like i feel like the time we have in between tournaments is so key even the 54 whole aspect so, so the timing of it all right how much time we have off the off season we have and then the three-day events allow us to fully give our effort out there full effort out there and still have it for the next week if we have to go back to back yeah so I don't feel like we get tired and, our, and you know, your superstar horses don't get fatigued and just give out. Every event we're giving our best. And I think the third and most important thing is the fact that every single shot matters out there. Now what I mean by that, and it kind of takes into account the first two aspects of it where it's the timing and also the team aspect is, is that if you're out of it let's say you're 35th place and you're 15 shots back or whatever right you still got a team 
championship you're playing for, a team you're playing for, and you don't want to let them down. Because at the end of the year, you could get relegated, you could get thrown off the team, anything could happen. And I think that that aspect of every shot matters on the last day where you want to you want to provide for your team. You want to yeah. go shoot 65 for your team compared to in, in other times when you made a cut and you were pretty much in dead last when you, after you made a cut, you, know, you could shoot 61 and make a couple more thousand dollars and cool, but it really didn't have a significance. It really wouldn't move you that, that far. Yeah. But out here, every single shot matters. And I think that's what elevates the game of golf. I don't think people truly understand that. On the, the level of play elevates because of that. On the team aspect, and I, and I do want to come into your, your three negatives as such. Yeah. On the team element, I've got an important question. Do you feel that fans are, are engaging with the teams as much as the live golf, etc., would have wanted to? Because I, I personally feel like there's a disconnect between the fans and the teams yep. as, of, as of we speak right now. Not yet. They're not engaged enough with it yet, and I think we will do a better job at communicating what the teams mean and why they're important and the, and the importance of the teams being successful and how that transfers over into uh, the communities that we're all a part of. You know, for example, the Stingers, South Africa, the Rippers in Australia, you know, for me, Dallas, and different parts of the United States that we're from, and even India, where Honorbon Lahiri is from the impacts we can have there, really showing that significance and coming from a ground root basis yeah. is what needs to, the con- the connection needs to be made in that way. Yeah. Like, for example, if you're Australian, it makes sense to support the Rippers. Yep. Yep. You know, if you're from South Africa, it makes sense to support, uh, who is the... Um, uh, the Stingers. Sing- Stingers, yeah. yeah. I think there's other... T- and then even to some degree, the Majestics are quite UK-based, albeit Henrik Stenson's from Sweden. But... I feel like there's a few teams where it's like, I'm, I'm, where's the connection there? Like I say, yeah. I think as it starts to grow, and you mentioned there that you start to add benefit to places like Dallas or yeah. the UK. It, where Finding Paul a home base from. and also giving it time. In this day and age, everybody wants things right here, right now, immediately, right? And back in the day, let's take the Lakers, for example. They were from... Was it Michigan, I think, or something like that? Yeah, no, about up up in the lakes of, and again, please, I want to find the correct information. But they were up near the lakes of Michigan, and why they called them the Lakers was because of the lakes. And I think that's what people don't realize is they moved to L.A. There's no resemblance to that area, so yeah. they became, It takes time to establish names and, and, a, and a place that you have an identity with. Yeah. It's just going to take time. And the more good players that continue to keep coming over and the better golf we continue to keep providing for the world of golf around the world, it's only going to continue to enhance the game. That, that's that's ultimately, ultimately what we're trying to accomplish. Yes, we got paid a lot. Nobody's, nobody's saying anything other than that. And we can't thank you know, them enough for, for providing us this opportunity. Um, Do you think that came after, though? I feel like the accepting that okay assigned because of the money i would say at first i don't think that was as quite as maybe made aware to the fans and, the, and what the, what part the fact of yeah i'm signing because i'm signing for the money i think at first it was there was more i'm signing because i feel like it's going to be a great opportunity etc where i think now you'll say it i've seen other players say well, it's, it's both. like i don't think it's i don't think it's either or i think it's both i think it's a split of both yeah and, and when i came out with this it was definitely financially incentivized for me and I made that a f- very clear from the get-go and maybe some others didn't but I know that I did I definitely said financially for my family this is an unbelievable opportunity yeah. I think as it was w- like Harold Varner the third who was like I've kind of done it for the money you know, uh, yeah, this yeah. Is like, and, yeah and you can, and, and you then can talk to bit, him straight up to your face and, and he'll ev- tell you exactly why he did it <laughs> and then everyone's a bit more like all right okay you know and you know I've spoke to I've spoke to Ian Poulter about this and you know if someone comes to you and says you can do less of your job i'm going to pay you more of the money yeah most people are going to do that obviously yeah dustin said it best on the netflix uh yeah. show what was it the full swing full swing exactly uh he said it best he's like if anyone <laughs> tells you that you're going to work a lot less you paid a lot more and you spend a lot more time with your family who who, who would fault you for that yeah that's pretty much what he said so uh you know that's what it is you got negatives uh well 
part of that is the communication to the teams, to the fans, right? How that all plays into a part. That's, that's one thing that we have to do a better job on. And I think over the course of time, as we're filling new positions, uh, we just got a new COO, uh, Lawrence Burian, he's an incredible businessman and he's, he's done a great job so far in the month that he's been implemented so far. I, I love him. I've had numerous conversations, great mindset. Uh, we're not going anywhere. Um, so that's one of the things that we got we to gotta figure out is, is a little bit more the, the marketing side of it, how to convey the message to the public and, and get the PR uh, into a place where the fans understand what's going on. You know, don't keep everybody in the dark. I think that's what we've got to do a better job on. And, and we're, go we're going to. We're, we're working on that. Again, we're in the infancy stage. It's going to take time to put the right people in the right place. Um, so you can fault us for that, but I, I would say this is, this is a, a long-term play, and we're going to get it right. It's just going to take some time. Another negative would be we, we probably didn't play as much as we should have leading into the Masters last year, but we're fixing that with the schedule. We have fixed that with the schedule. We are playing more going into it. And then uh, last one, um, shoot, I don't, I don't even know. I'd have to think for a long time. Even, even from your own personal standpoint, like – even for the, for the sake, and I, I've i said it publicly, I think you should have got picked for the Ryder Cup team this year and you weren't. Like, that's got to be perceived as a, as a negative oh, for you. Yes. And that's what I'm talking yes. about, like, personal negatives. Yeah, like, like, like not being able to play in my favorite events that I'd love to. Again, I understand the decision I made. So I'm not saying, oh, I'm, I'm not whining or anything. I'm just saying, it sucks that I don't get to play the Arnold Palmer and showcase for those fans in that area. Um, but I would also say the Ryder Cup, definitely. And, you know, the Olympics as well. Uh, I guess I just got to play better in majors. <laughs> That's it. Well, I mean, like I said, there's still a, obviously Brooks Kapka was yeah, picked for the team this he year. Uh, there was, yes, he won a major and he deserved to be on that team 100%. Uh, they kind of had to do that to save their butts. But yeah. Well, I feel like the way you're, certainly the way your game was trending, and we, we I've said it on the podcast, your 58 played a huge part in Liv's promotion this year. Yeah, I agree. Because you know what annoys me the most? And it's not. I wouldn't say it's particularly live that do this themselves, but it's part of the the, the money talk. Is I think as soon as a, a player wins, you can go out and, and win the, the it was at a Greenbrier when you won it. Across all social media, it's about how much you won. Yeah. And very rarely, very rarely, is it actually about you went out and shot X score, you went and shot 20 on the par for three rounds of golf or whatever it may be. You're right. I would say that was the first time so far when you went out and shot a 58, the number, the $4 million, et cetera, that you win for winning that event was actually put, put aside mm -hmm. and it, the number 58 was put up there mm -hmm. more. And, it, and, you know, it's not just live now. It's like any golf tournament that people play in now, whether it's a PGA Tour event, a, Europe, a DP World it's Tour event. It's all about how much they win. It's always about how much they win now. Oh, yeah. And, and I, I hate that from a standpoint where... I don't particularly care how much you win. Don't, because I think professional golfers deserve to win an awful lot of money. You go out and win the Masters, you win the US Open, yeah. you deserve to win an awful lot of money because mm -hmm. you're putting on a spectacle for the yep. crowd and, and the audience. We're entertainers. So for, but I just hate the fact that I, in the last couple of years, because there's been so much talk about money, mm -hmm. everything switched around. It's not about now the talent sometimes. It's about how much you're making and how much such a body's coming signing to play and live. And I'm like, no, come on guys, make it about these the talented the talent. golfers. Yep. But it's it it at the moment in professional golf it gets masked from just the money. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how that can ever change unless you go out and shoot a buddy fifty eight. Yeah. I mean I mean that's always gonna be a part of it. Um I feel like it's got worse, much, much worse. It definitely has. And I don't know how you fix that problem. I think as we continue to keep playing good golf and you have more top players coming over and experiencing what live is truly about. I don't like when I, when I, <laughs> when I shot 58, that last putt, I obviously wasn't thinking about the money. It wasn't about that. Honest to God. It was, yeah. I want to shoot. I, 50, I want to shoot 59. Of course. That's what I was first thinking. And then it went in. And I shot, oh, I'm going to shoot 58. <laughs> I shot 58. That's, that's what it was. And even, you know, when I won in Chicago too, that last day when I shot eight under, I was just trying to shoot the lowest I possibly could. I wasn't worried about how much money I was making. Yeah. Like we've all signed, we, we all have, 
we're, we're very affluent and, and it's not as much about the money. It, the money is a safe haven for us to yeah. make us feel comfortable in our lifestyles and what we have, right? Very blessed. And I'm able to give a lot back because of it. And I can do a lot for my communities now because of it. And I'm so grateful, forever grateful for that. But you're right. I think the money does get talked a lot about more than the golf itself. And I wish, you're, you're right. I wish it was talked even, more about. And it's even, again, because of the introduction of Liv and the fact that they were signing big name players to come and play on the, on the league. Obviously, then the PJ Tour had to react and they bring, they bring out the PIP player incentive program and even that to some degree it feels i don't like it it got a couple of weeks well, there, ago there's, got, a, there's 100 million in the pot that they spread out amongst 20 guys whereas you got the guys that are struggling on the back end where the heck's our money like what we still provided the whole year that's we what we're I mean. playing more events than, than rory mcroy or whoever right and i don't want to throw names i'm just saying no just, i know you know what i'm saying though right like but, we, we, they played more events than them and showed up at every single event to all these communities and they didn't get anything other than what they played for, right? I think, I think even separating that more, and I think you've probably almost got to stand a, a, separate to your, you being a professional golfer in that mix as the fans, as people watching and, and spending their hard-earned money, they're coming to watch a golf tournament yep. or buying equipment or paying for green fees or whatever it may be. I feel like it's those guys that are kind of like, I don't really care how much these guys earn like in the end. but but it, but at the moment it's getting thrusted down everyone's mm -hmm. throat because that's the, the hot topic at it the is. moment and, I, and yeah. I i really do hope it dies down like for me i don't really care when certainly when tiger won all of the, his majors nobody i didn't know how much he won for all those no. majors it was about how many majors was he winning it was about winning no. majors and it's about michael i mean obviously I'm, I'm not from the states but when michael jordan was probably winning all of his mm -hmm. championships it wasn't about how much how much yeah, the teams, teams winning michael phelps it's yeah. about gold medals it's not about how much he's winning mm -hmm. and i feel like at the moment golf's in a real sticky spot because money is a hot topic and and listen i've been guilty <laughs> Of, of talking about money in the podcast before, even on videos, like what catches people's attentions are really, really expensive golf clubs uh -huh. or they're, they're cheap golf clubs. Yep. Cause it's a, it's a talking point. It's people, polarizing. People want to see, well, hold on. Yeah. If it's dead cheap, is it going to perform? But, but is again, it dead expensive? Is it going to perform? This is why I think the game eventually needs to come back together. And I've said it from, from day one, when I, when I went over and, and there's numerous times where I talked to, to Jay about it too. I was, I was like, this all has to work out in the end. Um, for the good of the game. This can't just be for the PGA Tour, for Liv, or the fans have got to win here. What's your blue sky scenario? Let's My, fast forward three to five years. I'm going to be brutally honest here, and this is, this is not controversial at all. This, this, this should be something that I think everybody can see as working if both parties play, uh, play ball. What I could see is, is Liv integrating into the signature series on the PGA Tour in some capacity and having a, a two, two, two championships and one, where you have the individual component in the signature series and you have the team side of it. So you have the teams you're playing for, so no matter what, on that final day, that guy that's playing really bad still matters. It's, yeah. it's still a big deal in the team championship aspect of, of the tournament. Um, and then you, have, you guys have the individual side that's still competing for that individual title the, the way it is currently. I don't see that as being a problem. I see it as being an additive rather mm -hmm. than a negative. And, and I, I know a lot of people don't see that point of view, but I think that's a really solid solution to this whole problem. Um, we don't want to be in the fall. We, we want to be mainstream. We believe we should be mainstream. I, you know, we have the, some of the best golfers in the world that should be highlighted at these events. Um, that would be my blue sky scenario where we integrate, we figure out how to make it all mutually be beneficial and we play for um, the legacy that's there with a new idea and concept on top of it. So you you would then get access back to playing PGA Tour events if, if that became a, an option? I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Because right. what happened to this alignment that came out last year or this year, early this year, like feels like that was a huge talking point and it feels like it's died yeah. down. I can't speak much on that. You can't. No. Uh, not, not publicly. I mean, I hope something comes about from it. I, I pray that something comes about from it. But as, as it currently sits, we don't really know. Because it got everyone very excited. Yeah. Me included. Yeah. I was like, oh, God, there's yeah. something here. Yep. There's actually talks. That there is conversations taking yep. place yep. that is about potential collaboration or some <laughs> way of making this work for everybody, I'm, really. I'm going to say now in the next three to... Two, two to three years there will be a reintegration somehow 
yeah. in the golf ecosystem. I don't know what it's going to be called. I don't know what it, it's going to be. It, it's going to be at all. I don't know how it's going to play out. But I know there's going to be re reintegration. It's just going to take a little bit more time. I think that's the challenge at the moment. With as you mentioned earlier, with the the world we live in right now, it's almost you have to come out with a with a perfect product. There's no you can't come out with a product that's under you know not. What do you mean a perfect product? What's your perfect product scenario? No, what I'm, what I'm saying is I think in this day and age, we're super critical of, of the products that come out. So right. it has to be almost like, for example, so, Liv's only two years old and it's coming out there and it's, it's finding its feet. And, and in the first year, it was like, for, the, for a first year. Pretty good. This isn't terrible. They set up a tournament in eight weeks. That's what I'm saying. And held it to the same standard as uh, other events that I've played. But that's in. what I'm saying. I feel like, you know, there are there are areas where I think there's deserved kind of flack that needs to, or areas of improvement that need definitely yeah. ironing out. Yeah. Then you also look at it and you think, the tournaments they've put on, the talent they've re recruited, the actual hype that they've managed to do, it's like, it's not bad in two years, but what I'm saying is a lot of a lot of or even gluing me. It's like we almost expect it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. We expect it to be an established brand that's been running for 20 yeah. years. Human, within just two yeah, years. Let's just say this right now: humans aren't perfect. We all make mistakes, and it's going to take time for this system to work effectively and consistently over the course of time. Just as I think so. Going back to YouTube, yeah, one of your <clears throat> most popular series. <laughs> And it's actually number one video on the channel right now is you yep. versus Phil Mickelson. Yep. And to be honest, I have been a huge fan of those videos because for me, I think that's how YouTube golf should be should be consumed. It's like it's on the ground, it's personal, you mic up, you, you're getting a real reaction. And the match you had against Phil Mickelson was absolutely brilliant. Like obviously he is also a natural performer. He, natural he, entertainer. He could easily have his own YouTube channel. A thousand percent. Heartbeat. I told him to, to have I'd a YouTube I'd be worried channel. if he, you know, <laughs> I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you if Phil Mickelson came me, out and a few others, I'd be like, holy crap. Because I think what, what you guys can add on a weekly basis, like you go to the tournament, I actually think you should do a lot more at these tournaments. Like if you had little nine hole matches or, you know, yeah. did a couple of them before the, in the, in the warm up rounds, the practice rounds, it's like, it's huge and, mm -hmm. and again going back to this idea how can you get more fans interacting how can you get more fans wanting to watch the actual main tournaments yep. live tournaments yep. i think that's how you do it you pull them in and you and you get them to know that little bit of interaction between you and phil mickelson you and whoever else well, it may be and i think that's why i was so keen on going to live was because of that opportunity we had whereas on tour they wouldn't allow us to go film and promote on my channels. Um, Live, I have that opportunity now. And what's special is you start to see the affiliate marketing that comes around because of that, right? Whereas Phil and I, and with the High Flyers and the Crushers, were able to come together, play a match, promote our brands, yeah. and in a sense, still promote Live, right? Yeah, it's and great. it's a mutually beneficial thing for all parties. And I think as time goes on, you're going to start seeing a little bit more decentralization of media rights, because that is the only way to continue to grow in this day and age. You know what I loved about it as well? It wasn't manufactured. No, it was real. That, it that's, was. Again, there was, there was, what was there? There was three cameramen on that thing, and we set it up a day before. Yeah. And we said, let's go play nine. Let's go. Cameron Tringali, Phil. Uh, Bond and myself, and we're just going to go play a match against each other. Let's see how it, how it goes. And you don't want against Bubba Watson too. Yep. yep, that was pretty cool as well. Harold Varner as well. Harold Varner. Yeah. Who who's on the hit list coming soon? And who do you think? Which matchup do you really think the audience want to see? Well, uh, we can speak about uh, Sergio. I think we can talk about Sergio. We, I got something coming up here soon. It won't be like a direct. It'll be a fun challenge with nice. him. That'll be awesome. Uh, love to play against Dustin. That'd be great. That'd be fantastic. It's Dustin into into that sort of content. Not really. He's not really into anything else other than fishing. But. <laughs> <laughs> so you, but, would it just be you? Because I even just like, obviously I know you've done it always in pairs at the moment. I think I pairs think, is great because we want to showcase the team yeah. aspect as well. So who would be your partner against Dustin and who on, who on his team would you want as his partner? Or who uh, do you think he'd pick? Pat Perez would be hilarious. Be and then Charles Howe would be hilarious, or Paul Casey. I've played with Bond. Bond is a uh, 
big talker. Uh, he, he wouldn't know it, but but he he can he can uh, shit talk. He's a good shit talker, I guess. Say <laughs> so. Dustin um, Johnson would be a good one. Dustin Johnson currently having Pat interest, Perez. I- Bon and I are great, but but again, I'd also go to say that like Cam Smith would be a lot of fun too. Be really good. That'd be a just good on match. Dustin. How far are you hitting it past Dustin currently? Um, when I strike it and it's got good spin, probably twenty thirty. He still okay. hits it out there pretty far. That he does. What the hell? Yeah, he's You're twenty thirty past him. Yeah. So Cam Smith. Cam Smith would be fun. Is he arguably now your putting has improved tremendously? <laughs> he's obvious famous. He's for, the best putter and probably one of the best, if not the best putter in the world right now. Is he better than you putting? I would probably say statistically, yes. Um, it'd be close though. It'd I be feel, very close. I mean, I'd love to watch that piece of content. That would be really good. Just you and him on a putting competition. Like, how cool would that Thank be? You. Thank You're you. You're welcome. You can write that down. Like That's nine a- hole, <laughs> the, the two best putters in the world going yeah. head to head. Mm-hmm. I'd watch that for an hour. Yeah. I honestly That's would. a great idea. Good. And, and you know what I love about that as well? you might correct me i feel like you're very different in your styles of completely putting. different you're very methodical mm-hmm. and you're very measured you pace every put out you know the slope you you worked on your ruler distances all that fun stuff <laughs> cam smith doesn't even take a practice put no just looks goes i mean it's crazy yeah he's figured something out for himself that works very well have you talked to him much about it no not much and he won't tell you much about it either because he's got his own little secrets that he wants and to does keep. he act is it secrets or does he just like does it does he just naturally do it i don't know <laughs> i don't know so that that would be a good one that'd be a good one and then i think brooks is what everybody wants to see and i think brooks is what everybody wants to see i need Bryce a rematch against Shambo. against you, him you know that you know that everybody wants yeah. to see you play against brooks i need a rematch against him but he wants money but you got money. money. You've got money. Yeah, I know. But but the thing is, is uh, he he wants at least from what I've heard, it's like let's just go play. Let's go play nine. Let's let's, let's uh, show off your team. Show off my team. When you say money, do you want a wa- does he want a wager? Does he want pay no, today? paid? I'm not talking about a wager. I'm talking about he wants to get paid. Okay. What um <laughs> what um where's your relationship with him at the moment? Yeah, you know, we have a good understanding of each other, I think. Um, I've got respect for him, and I think he has respect for me. And we've tried to grow this league from its inception together. And we have a a big respect for each other because of that. All the hours that we've put in talking to each other and going, how is this going to work? Let's get this involved. Let's get that involved. Let's, Let's figure out how to make it come together the hours of conversations we've had about this league and how to make it work has, has been actually pretty special and that's why i think it's a cool unique relationship and we can banter back and forth now and have some fun and it does it, there's a little backstory to it like yeah it does mean something but we're past that and we're, we're adults and um <laughs> we like bantering back and forth there was a few pictures posted online did you were you playing together casual a casual round of golf not long ago was that just yeah practicing? Was Co- uh Cost- costa terra in portugal Right. And we just had some fun. We were there before the British Open, and yeah, they're, they're good dudes. They just go and you know shoot the crap, and we have, we have a good time. So it, it was a lot of fun. You've got a four man scramble, okay, you and three others, to shoot the lowest oh possible score around an eighteen hole golf course. But yeah. You cannot pick someone from your own team. Who are you picking? This is all on live. All on live. Oh, okay. So I would go with. Phil Mickelson for the wedge game. Okay. Not even a question. And he can still bomb it off the tee, right? Yeah, he can every once in a while. Yeah. A competitor, yeah. maybe not, but yeah. <laughs> not really. Uh, I said that sarcastically. Um, I'd go with Cam Smith for putting. So somebody that's dialed in. Um, Brooks for his irons. Brooks for his irons? Yeah. Wow. He's a great, he's a phenomenal iron player. Yeah, and, and then you driving. It. And me driving. I mean, that's a video. There's another one for that you. That would be a good video too. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would, that be, would be epic. Epic. I think you. I think off the black tees, you've got a chance of shooting very low fifties. Yeah, I agree with that. That would be absolutely incredible. <laughs> that would be nuts. What's your and and I'd love to know if they've changed. What's your goals? Like, yeah, are you? What's your golf goals? Yeah, my golf goals, that's very simple. Win as many tournaments as possible. I mean... Has, has that changed now maybe in the last couple of years? 
Did no. you have different goals, like winning more major championships? Was it winning more? It's the same. I want to win it when every time I tee it up. It's the okay. same no matter what. So, so those you goals say haven't changed. I feel like it's more feasible now than it ever has been Yeah, with the equipment that I have and the, the knowledge I have on putting. And uh, the Greens books really set me back, by the way. Uh, the USJ did a really good do- job at stalling my putting game for a couple of years. And, it, you know, it's, it's frustrating. Like, I'm a, I'm a family member of theirs. Like, I've won two USJ events and uh, love them like family. But very frustrating right off the bat. Um, it took me about a year to get comfortable with reading greens without a greens book. You don't have greens books that live? Nope. Well, you, no. It no. just banned everywhere? Everywhere, yeah. Well, besides, like, LPGA and stuff, it, again – we were trying to fall under the world golf ranking system. So we wanted to be compliant in that regard yeah. as, in as many places as possible. And, um, yeah, we just don't have greens books. We could have, but we all kind of made the decision that we wanted to play, play ball. What's your, uh, what's your thoughts about not getting world ranking points now? Uh, I think it's, I, th- I think it's par for the course in regards to the way that, people and organizations view live it's very were frustrating. you surprised no not at all you, you were i know their agenda i i, you I were know expecting that result we we know their whole playbook we we see exactly what they're trying to do they're trying to hold us out long enough to where we're irrelevant where you don't get into majors where, you don't then, get then oh we'll anything. give you points now we're we're, we're going to play nice in the sandbox but then we're all irrelevant we don't have enough points to even fill a field because what do you even know your world ranking now what is it you want to check it out what's my world ranking go to world golf ranking this is gonna be great because you've got to say you're in I mean, what were you when you joined live yeah, i've won two out of the last four events what were you when you joined live what world ranking? Oh, i was top 10 uh something yeah i think i was top 10 yeah i was top 10 yep and do you feel in the last two years you've played better golf this last half of the season yes i feel like i've actually played way better golf was it 149th 149 and that's because like the last three majors i played i made the cut and played somewhat decent in them fourth at the pga and uh, british open didn't do very well the u.s open did okay that's really what's holding me at 149 if i didn't have those this year i'd be 500 and something probably it's crazy isn't it? yeah and you know what it, it's it's okay i don't i don't hold my self uh to, to that level at all i, I don't I don't, I'm not bitter. I don't care. Uh, What I do care about is um, the people that aren't being ranked right, that don't have a chance to be in the majors. Mm. You know, I'm in the majors. I'm lucky enough. 2020 was amazing. It was an amazing year for me. And the US, the US Open really set me up for a lot of success. Yeah. But I feel bad for the guys like Joaquin Neiman that deserve a spot. He is good enough to play in every major championship. The top 50 player in the world doesn't have that opportunity. Um, Taylor Gooch yeah. won three times this year. Yeah, points his, winner. His world rankings like, is way off. What are we talking about? If you can't see th- past that, I, I'm sorry. I don't know how to ra- rationalize with that individual. If you, yeah, if you I, no, it's no. Difficult. For it's me, as much as I understand that there's got to be a level of um, what's the right criteria that's yep. got to be hit. And, yep, and I understand that too. I have full respect and, uh, and ownership and understanding of that. But if you're going to have an official world ranking, it has to, has to include the best players in the world. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, you know, at least yourself, I don't want to name everybody, but yourself. Bunch of players. Taylor Gooch, Cam Smith, or, you know, Brooks Koepka would all be way, 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 way higher than what they are currently. Correct. And that's like, say, you, Cam and Brooks, you're okay because you've won majors in the last few years. I feel bad for the other guys. But like Taylor Gooch, who's not particularly playing at the highest level on majors standpoint, so that's it's not right really, is it? It's not because there's plenty of guys that play well during the PGA Tour season and don't play well in majors and they're up there in the top 50. So your goals are still the same right now to win yeah. as many golf tournaments as physically possible. Yep, and I believe I have the equipment going into this next year that will allow me to do that. Let's fast forward a little yeah. bit of time, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, okay? Oh okay. And you're coming to the end of your golf career, okay? Mm-hmm. What do you want to look back on and have achieved? My goal is to have, in some way, shape, or form, taken the game of golf, which has 100 million participants right now, and grown it 
this next 10 years to 150 million golfers. You know, 1.5, right? Yeah. And then 50 years, get it to where there's 200 to 250 million golfers playing this great game that creates amazing relationships. Those? Uh, shows your integrity level. Um, it displays a lot of great ca- character traits that you need in, uh, in life. And I think um, when you establish those values at a young age, it leads to better people in this world. Yeah. That's the way I've seen it and uh, happen. There's so many golfers that I grew up with that are very successful in their own lines of field. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the game of golf. Yeah. You know, and a lot of them that weren't affluent growing up either. It was just the integrity that they had because of the game of golf that allowed them to um, be positive for this world. And that's that's ultimately my goal um, when I look back on the game of golf. If, if if I don't do anything from here on out and I can accomplish that goal of growing at 250 million, being a part of that in some yep. way, shape, or form, I'm not saying I'm the reason why. I don't, I don't care about that, but I, I help to get to there. That's a successful life for me. A million percent. And, and, and I, listen, that very much aligns with my goals. You know, I'm in a very unique opportunity. I get to speak to a lot of golfers and non-golfers every single day. Mm-hmm. But the moment that that, diet, that that bucket needs to continue to open at the top, that funnel for getting more people yeah. trying golf. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I see golf personally. It's not just 18 holes playing a, a, a nice country club. It's mm-hmm. getting golf clubs in people's hands. Yep. And, yep. and on a driving range driving range <laughs> short golf courses yep. that are Putt fast park. that are easy All to play stuff. even VR golf like anything yeah. like that for me that get people interacting with the game that we love mm. and that we've grown up with video really. games I love just it. playing on uh, video games I think Tiger, Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2004 one of my favorite games ever wasn't it <laughs> it was absolutely 2004 huge yep Bryson DeChambeau video game. Oh jeez, here Come we go. On. How, about, how about a how no. about a live versus PGA Tour uh, video game? <laughs> all right, all right. That'd be fun. You said it. I like that. I think that'd, that'd, be, be, that'd be awesome. I think people it? don't want to see it in video game format though. No, they got to see it in real life. I think people want to see how it in amazing real life. would it be like a Ryder Cup style sort of thing, but live versus PGA Tour. Imagine. Would you Imagine be up for that? Imagine the hysteria. Do you think the live guys are up for that? We're all in for it. Hundred thousand percent. I feel like for for nothing. By the way, we we, we just want to do it. Well, you can. You what can afford mean? to. It's like you can. We can afford to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a cheap That's shot. Funny. That was a cheap shot. Hey, I'll give you some. That problems. was a cheap that was, shot. That was really good. But I think I think I think the audience would love seeing that. Yeah, it's about the fans at this point now. Like, imagine that. We, we've got to provide for the fans. We have to. I'm all in for it. Who would, who would, who would your singles match? Would you love to play Patrick singles? Cantley. Done. <laughs> hat or no hat? Uh, I'd no hat him just for fun. <laughs> oh wow, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the X-rated part of the, of the podcast. Um, yeah, I think I, I genuinely think, and there's lots and lots to talk about it. When it when it people first started speaking about it, I was like, no, 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 please don't. Because I almost, I almost feel like it's going to do everything the opposite of what actually we want to happen. Like, I think it's only going to divide the leagues more. I think it can only mm-hmm. really happen if there was some sort of collaboration. Mm-hmm. If almost like it was, it was, I mean, I'd love even this idea where it was, it was done on this sense that it was the final thing that happened before the final collaboration. Like the final thing that happened before both parties made yeah. it all work again. You had this kind of PJ versus Liv. All right, let's get after it. I'd, I'd be happy to do it right now. To be honest, if it was in this off season, it'd be amazing. Just don't wanna, I don't want to make uh, no more tension. No, no, it, it won't divide anymore. I, th- I, I honestly think, no, to be honest though, I really think it will showcase that we're all just golfers yeah. in the end. If you sit back from it and people truly take a third person perspective on this or a 40,000 foot view, they'll realize, man, this is just golf and they're still passionate and they they still care about shooting the lowest scores we possibly can. Um, On the last point then, on your goals of 50 years, obviously mentioned about growing the game and I totally align with that. What about your own actual personal career? What would you love, what would you love, what would you love to tell your grandchildren that I achieved from a playing standpoint, this yeah. is golf. It, it'd be five to seven majors, 
somehow getting ranked into a place where we're all in the ecosystem and I can be ranked number one in the world. I got the fourth at one, one point in time. And then I'd like to hit a career of like 25 wins would be a lot of fun. I'm at, no, I, I mean, I, 25 to 30 wins. I mean, I'm at uh, worldwide, I'm at 12 now, I think. So doubling that, I've been playing for six years. I, I could I think fairly see it, it, yeah. myself doing that quite easily if my body doesn't give out and if I'm doing the right things and healthy and uh, God willing. Um, I see myself having that potential. Five, five to seven majors is a big goal. Is, is a not a big goal. It, it definitely is a goal that's attainable. Yeah, it's not crazy. It's not like you know what Tiger did, fifteen majors. Cross. But that, along with winning twenty-five to thirty tournaments outside, of, and it's a lot more difficult, by the way, with Live to win yeah. tournaments. He's only got fourteen, and it's fifty-four holes, and it's more of a shootout. And you know, so. I think those are realistic goals that, that I can achieve over the next decade. If if I get my equipment exactly dialed in, we know exactly what everything is doing. Um, that is that is totally possible. And uh, maybe the first tour pro to make a hole in one on the par five. <laughs> Arnold Palmer would be so sick. <laughs> I could I could do that. I mean, that is the hole to do it on. By the Imagine. way, Imagine. I don't think there's any other hole that you could do it on other than that that I've played on. In, in no, I well there are there has been hole in ones on par fives. What do you call it? Um, oh, hold up. I think I know it. it starts oh, with a C. What is it called? It starts with Condor. a C. Condor. Condor. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I mean. Condor. How sick is that? Imagine. That would be a lot of fun. Be incredible. I think, like I say, and there's just on, on last last couple of points, obviously, long drive, is that now a thing that you enjoy doing, but that's not taking place anymore? Well, uh, there's not really an incentive, especially since I, I broke my hand. Um, I don't want to have that again. Why did you broke your hand? Yeah, I, you didn't know that? I must have missed that. <laughs> so look at that scar. Oh, Jesus Christ. So I broke the um, uh, hook of the handmate. That was from Long, long drive. drive. Yeah, I broke the hook of the handmate. I was out for eight weeks in 2021, 2022, 2022. Jesus. Beginning of 2022 is when I broke it. and. Um, right before the Brooks match, actually, I broke it, but I just played through the pain, didn't even know about it, really, that I broke it. I thought it was just a hand injury, like muscle thing or whatever. No, I broke the hook of the handmate, and they opened my hand up, and there was just pieces everywhere. It was disgusting. Oh so they flushed out the top bone and um, took the bone that had broken because it can't heal. Um, a lot of baseball players get that injury. It's Jeez. pretty common, actually. And so I went through that process, and as long as I'm, I'm healthy in that regard, because a lot, a lot of, again, when you were putting on a lot of your mass and really changing yeah. body shape, a lot of people were like, oh, he's going to get injured. He's going to hurt himself. Obviously, yeah, and he I, did have an injury. The, the reason why I hurt myself was because I was doing it in cold temperatures. And that's a disclaimer for everybody. If it was in warm temperatures, I wouldn't have broke it. Is that right? Wow. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was just me being really stupid and, and not cautious. I was trying to show off and um, ego got in the way and um, did something stupid. But knowing that now it, it, it allowed me to get to a place where I started to really focus on golf again, get my game back, figure out some equipment, and it really led to some great play the latter half of the season. Genuinely, genuinely, the way you've hit the golf ball the last few days and what you've been telling me about your equipment tweaks, which is super exciting, I know, top secret at the Can't moment. talk about that, but <laughs> I'm excited, and I'm, I, I genuinely, I really, really, really want to see you perform well, obviously, in your own league and, and on live. I want to see you back up there, majors, winning majors. You, 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 you know you're good enough. But I think having that, getting around and winning the Masters or winning the US yeah. Open or winning the Open for me is just like would really, really just boost. I, I, when you said about five to seven majors, it's like why not? Why the hell not? Do you know what I mean? And, and you've got the talent to do it. You know that. I appreciate that. Um, and thank you for your time. This, this, it's been fun. Like, like I say, I know there was a bit more kind of deeper than maybe. Oh, whatever. On, I love it. Like, you know me. I, I, I talk know, that's a what lot. I mean. That's why, that's why <laughs> I kind of wanted to kind of probe a little bit because I was like, let's just see what can happen. But again, done in all due respect. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. The videos that are coming out soon are going to be absolutely epic. You're going to love them. They're going to be and fun. Bryson, thanks for your time, pal. And good luck next year. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. It was a great week. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks. Peace.